Good morning, everyone, again. I'm Mariangela Pretelli. I'm a cloud strategy consultant here at Cabit, and I'm here together with Tommaso, who I will let introduce, introduce himself. Hi, everybody. I'm Tommaso Bacconi. I work as a full stack developer, and today I'm here to, to show you a live ransomware attack and, uh, more important, how can you recover your files using the versioning feature of S3. So a very cool demo we prepared for you. But before uh, digging into that, we would just, uh, I, I actually would like to give you an overview of what Cabit uh, is and what Cabit technology uh, is for those of you, of course, who uh, never entered in, uh, into contact with our world. So let's start from uh, who's Cabit. Cabit is uh, an Italian uh, company. We are uh, based and uh, um, we were founded in Bologna in 2016. And from that year, many investment companies decided to join us and to invest, of course, in our growth. Here you can see some of them, such as uh, Azimut or the European Commission. So what I would like to give you in this very couple uh, of minutes of uh, overview I prepare for you is the idea of where Cabit technology uh, is standard compared to the competition, of course, and where we are particular, of course, where we are different from them. But let's start, of course, from the basis. So as you might know already, Cabit offers an object storage as free compatible uh, solution. And the main use case, even of course, even if of course is not uh, limited to, but the majority of our clients are using Cabit as a second or third backup uh, layer in, a, uh, in an anti-ransomware and uh, disaster recovery uh, way, let's say. So the majority of them basically already have some redundancy uh, on-premise that they back up with uh, either Veeam or QNAP or Synology or Commvault or really any other S3 compatible clients you might uh, find on the market. And as you know, of course, the ecosystem at this point is uh, really huge and they natively connect them with Cabit. And again, with Cabit being uh, at least uh, in functions, uh, very, a very standard solution, you will be able to do what you can do, of course, with also other object store solutions. So you will be able to unlock features such as versioning or object locking to make your data uh, immutable and so defend them from uh, ransomware, of course. You will be able to create uh, links with uh, expiration dates or set up ACL or YAM policies and so on and so forth. So again, from this point of view, uh, a very standard solution. So where are we different from the market? As you probably already read somewhere or discovered, the difference uh, relies on our network, basically, on our infrastructure. Indeed, Cabit doesn't have a centralized infrastructure. We don't own a centralized data center. What we did instead was to create a, a geo-distributed network that is connected through peer-to-peer -peer connections. We're going to see this better, how it works uh, together with Tommaso later, but just to give you a very brief idea, whenever you're going to connect your Veeam, your Commvault, or all the others, as we said before, to Cabit, your data will get, first of all, encrypted, of course, then they will get split into several chunks. We will make them redundant, and then we are going to distribute them towards your national uh, boundaries. Again, might then be in Italy, uh, which is, of course, the market where we started from, as we were saying before, or the other three, we just opened up France, UK, and, uh, and Germany, as we were saying. So the uh, cool thing is that if, from the one hand, you are able, able basically to use the same identical service that you use with other cloud providers. From the other hand, you also have a completely different set of competitive advantages. We're gonna see together, we're gonna see them together very briefly now, but as I'm gonna, of course, remind you later as well, we're gonna um, share with you a QR, a QR code later so that you will be able to book also an appointment, a one-to-one -one with us of the sales and business, business development uh, team 
to deep dive into these uh, competitive advantages and of course also your specific needs as uh, companies. But again, let's uh, see these uh, four points together very briefly. So the first point is cost savings. So compared to hyperscalers such as AWS, Azure or similar ones, we are able to cut down costs even up 80%. This, of course, depends on, uh, you know, different um, different points. So, of course, as you understand, we don't have uh, data centers to build or maintain. So, again, of course, from the beginning, we cut down uh, the cost of a lot. The other prices, um, the other points, sorry, are based on how we present the price, right? The famous cost per terabyte, which is a cost per terabyte already including basically everything, such as the ingress and egress costs, you know, to um, restore your data, basically. Being a distributed cloud, we are also, and this I think is the most important feature we have to offer, actually, um, we are already as resilient as multi-region uh, services, right? The, the ones, of course, that make you uh, copy your data into several data centers, which, which of course are super important in order to increase the availability and resiliency of your data. But of course, they are also uh, quite expensive usually. Again, being Cabit, a distributed network, we are already offering uh, by design, basically. The second point, security which for those of you who knew Cabit already you know security is basically our core feature this is the reason why we are already working in with more than 200 companies in italy and in the other countries uh, where for example uh, includes this list leonardo which um, works for national defense in italy or bologna airport turin airport or barilla madori and many others the third point is digital sovereignty. Again, as we said, we only operate within your national uh, boundaries. So, of course, we uh, are already compliant to all the different regulations, uh, either it be GDPR, CCPA, ACN, or, of course, all the ISO regulation. Fourth point, but not for importance, of course, is sustainability. Well, thanks to this distributed uh, network, we are able to save energy. And of course, because of that, we do not only cut down costs, but also CO2 emissions. Well, these four points are basically the reason why, as we were saying before, more than 200 companies already uh, cho uh, chose us. And of course, they are different in, uh, you know, in the industry they operate in and, of course, also uh, in the size and the type of company uh, they are. So we cannot wait to also talk to you and better understand your specific company uh, needs. But uh, without further ado at this point, I think I give you uh, a general understanding of what Cabit is. So I'm gonna let uh, Tommaso take the mic and continue with our demo. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mariangela. It was really interesting. Uh, so. Now we can proceed and uh, and see. Before going into the demo, actually, um, I'm going to present you some basic uh, um, stuff about the Cabit architecture. And how, how Mariangela was saying, we don't have uh, a data center. Our files are, uh, are stored in this peer-to-peer -peer network that we call a Swarm. And uh, this Swarm, um, these peers uh, talk to each other through a peer-to-peer -peer protocol um, that is it's integrated with the, the S3 through our S3 gateway. So anytime a client make a S3 request, we convert through the gateway um, that request into a, a protocol that our peer can understand. On top of that, we have our coordinator. The coordinator is, a, is actually a complex entity made of a lot of microservices and it's needed to monitor the status of the cells. Okay, now that I, I give you this, uh, this overview, we can go into the demo and what's the context of the demo? And that's the context. Um, let's assume we have an attacker, this evil guy, and uh, it wants to encrypt all of, your, all of your files in order to ask for a ransom. The evil guy will create two keys, a public key and a private key. The public key is the one used actually to encrypt the files. 
and the private key is the, the, the key needed to decrypt them. So the victim will theoretically pay the ransom in order to obtain that private key. Okay, today we are going to show how the victim can recover the file without having that private key, so without having to pay the ransom. I will show you my screen and uh, in order to do that, and uh, we can proceed then with the demo. Um, I will use this tool. This is a software written by Marco Moschettini, CTO of Calbit, and uh, it's just for demonstration and study purposes. Uh, and uh, he, he does some basic operation like encrypting, creating keys, and stuff. We are going also to show um, a clone and another tool that is the AWS CLI. Um, a clone is a, a very useful uh, software. It's a command line software. Um, it, it enables the user to make a cloud to cloud uh, uh, backup, uh, but also it has this feature, the air clone mount, uh, that we are going to use to sync a local directory with uh, uh, a bucket on, the, on our object storage. This is our Cubbit console. This is a client that uh, we as Cubbit wrote to, to enable the user in, into making uh, S3 operations uh, or also handling uh, um, identity access management, creating keys uh, and other stuff. As you can see, I already created here a bucket called ransomware demo. And this bucket has the versioning feature enabled. Inside the bucket, I already have uh, um, stuff, uh, files, uh, very important files, uh, etc. Ah, I alert, uh, um, I will go um, in, into technical details uh, um, sometimes, so I apologize if uh, everything is not so clear, uh, if, if, you, if you don't have uh, that feeling with the, with the code. Um, here, for example, I already uh, synced my local directory with uh, my bucket using a clone. I'm telling a clone to mount the bucket, ransomware demo, into a local directory called Cabbit mount. So if I go to the directory, this is the, our, our Cabbit mount, I have the very same files that we saw on the console. And if I make any changes here, the changes will be reflected on the remote and on the other way around. So what the attacker should do? Um, I already installed the, the tool. Uh, let's check the, the documentation. I should uh, um, create a couple of keys for Sphinx. OK, so those keys are actually created on the desktop uh, as specified in the path. And, and now I will use the, 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 the public key to encrypt uh, the directory. Um, so the command here is ransomware encrypt. And I need to specify a path of the directory I want to encrypt. Um, the directory is cabbit mount. And of course, I need to specify where the, cab the public key is. And the public keys is on the desktop and it's called uh, pub.pen. I can optionally add a ransom message. That is something that usually the, attacker, the, atta the attackers do. I, of course, should provide a path to that message that I also have on the desktop. It's called important. And if I run this command, as you can see, the ransomware will start and will start encrypting every file one at a time. And it can also take a while since encrypting operation can be kind of heavy. And if I check the folder, yeah, I have these .eng files and it's not possible to open them with any program. Yeah, those are encrypted forever. And now I would need my private key to decrypt them. And also since this folder is synced with the remote, if I refresh the console, I see that our files are encrypted, dot .eng. I just have uh, this uh, not encrypted file that is this, uh, the, the ransom message. And usually the ransom message pass the public key since it is uh, useless to decrypt the files. And uh, usually it provides uh, uh, an address or something to send the money to. 
Um, so are these files lost? Uh, no, of course they aren't, uh, because we enable the versioning. What's the version feature then? Uh, the versioning feature basically creates a new version, a new copy of the file every time that file changes. So it preserves a stack, an history of the, of the files. If we enable this uh, button, show versions, we see that uh, for every file, we have a .enc version. Uh, this version with this symbol, this, this hashtag, and this means that the, uh, the file got deleted. This is a delete marker version. And then we have the original file. So if we target the original file, we can um, retrieve it, download it, and, and everything. So what should we do to recover and make it this uh, um, visible uh, without uh, toggling all the versions? Uh, we have two options. We can either make this uh, uh, make version, main version. So now we have uh, the original file, the deleted file, and the original, original file. Or the, the, the other options is, uh, let's take uh, another deleted file. Uh, we can delete the delete marker. The console will ask us to prompt the permanently delete uh, in order to make sure we are sure we want to delete the version. And, uh, and now we, we, we now that we deleted the delete marker, the that file is visible. We can use it, we can download it uh, and stuff. Uh, so we can do this operation for every file on the console, but this is pretty annoying. So I will uh, present you another tool to do that. And that's the AWS CLI. AWS CLI is another command line tool um, provided by uh, AWS. It's uh, free, it's open source, and it's uh, really useful to, to do this kind of stuff uh, on the command line. I will uh, start from the beginning and configure a new profile, since for any tool, um, we, we need to provide some keys um, to access our bucket, of course. I already, I, I was already, um, I already configured their clone one, but the, for this tool, I will just start from uh, from scratch. Um, so um, AWS, uh, we want to configure a new profile, uh, so we can prompt configure and call this profile ransomware. Okay, it does want some access keys, so we can create a couple of them from the console by going to API keys on the sidebar, clicking on generate new client API key. We can rename into ransomware and provide the access and the secret. The default region name is fine and we don't, uh, we don't need anything else. So now let's try to delete an object using uh, AWS SLI. Um, let's target uh, um, some object uh, into the folder. Maybe we can target this chain delete txt.enc, let's say. Okay, what should we do? Uh, let's see the documentation. This is the delete object command. So we want uh, um, to delete an object. Uh, we should provide the profile that we just created, that it is called ransomware. Uh, most important, we should provide the endpoint uh, since by default AWS is targeting AWS, but uh, we actually want to target Cabbit. Uh, okay, sh we should now provide the bucket value. And the bucket value is called the ransomware demo. And we want, we have to provide the key. The key is actually the, the file name, but uh, not, a, not the file name, but the, the whole path to the file. So the, the, the file is inside a folder, so it's called very important files, slash, uh, and the name of the file, that is chain.txt.enc. And uh, we should also target in the current version ID in order to delete that version of the file. So the version ID, we can retrieve it from the console as well um, and pass the version ID. Okay, if everything was, was good, yeah, we received the version ID as a response. 
that means that the operation was successful. And if we navigate back, uh, um, we have chain delete txt on bank uh, don't no more. We deleted that. Okay, that was just one file, of course, but uh, being this uh, a command line uh, operation, we can batch this, uh, this uh, command into a script. Uh, we, I will not uh, write the script from scratch, but I already have one uh, written before. I, I'll just show you. Uh, I should have it in my workspace. This is called the restore. Okay. Um, so what we are going to do in the script, uh, we are going to list any key, any object that we want to delete. And uh, what are those objects? Are the objects that ends with the dot .enc encryption uh, with dot .enc and uh, all the delete markers. Once we have those two lists, we are just going to loop through them and call the very same command we just called delete object for any of the fi all those files in the list. So uh, let's uh, let's run the script. The script requires a bucket name because of how it's written. And yeah, it's actually deleting stuff. Um, as you can see, uh, first of all, is it's deleting the dot .enc files, and it's making a request for uh, every file, so it could take a while. And then it will go on with the with the delete markers. If we try to refresh now our our bucket, yeah, we see that dot uh, um, .enc files are disappearing. And um, okay, and some files are coming back to life. Yeah, slowly, but uh, we are reco recovering all of them. This is still empty, but as you can see here, um, original version of the file uh, are becoming visible. We don't have uh, deleted files. We don't have encrypted files. Yeah, also here, they're coming back. And slowly, also, uh, the cabin mount will, uh, that is syncing to the remote will start to align and, and retail you. Oh, OK, we already have it. Uh, that was quick. So OK, now we have all the original files. We, we didn't need the, the private key to decrypt them. Um, and that's for thank you to the versioning. Um, yeah. So that was the demo, basically. Um, we saw why the version feature is uh, so useful uh, when you um, suffer from a ransomware attack. Um, being said that, though, I think you can, we can go on with the q and session. Um, I will just stop sharing. And uh, I want to show you this uh, QR code. And so if you want to go deeper in the matter, you can schedule a call with Mariangela or even with me if you need some more technical details. Very interesting, as always, of course. And uh, I remind everybody that, of course, you're going to receive uh, this, uh, the recording of this demo into your email. So you will be able to rewatch it again together with all the other uh, demos we prepare for you uh, weekly, as we were saying at the beginning. So um, that being said, of course, the QR uh, code is here to deep dive in your um, in your specific needs as a company. But uh, yeah, let's start with our Q&A uh, session since we have definitely a couple of minutes to, to see if our participants, um, again, have some cu curiosity, let's say. And I see here uh, the first one about uh, basically uh, why Cabit, uh, uh, okay, thank you. I do not get the point of Cabit uh, having no data center in that way um, saving CO2. Well, first of all, of course, this I think it would take more than a couple of minutes. So uh, again, of course, I invite you, SL, uh, to to book uh, an appointment with us. We will be able to explain it better. But uh, it basically, and of course, Tommaso, please add uh, any mm -hmm. information. 
might, but it's basically connected to the lower usage of uh, resources that we are able to uh, provide by not uh, building, not uh, maintaining new uh, data centers all the time, but reusing the ones that we already have everybody in their own personal um, countries. I would say I, I that. Think we, we didn't focus uh, uh, probably on what the, um, what the peer of the swarm are, because we are not relying on other data centers. The files are actually on some nodes that are, um, let's say, uh, small hardwares uh, spread all over the, the country. So we're not, when we're not using a, the a data center for storing the files. That's the main difference uh, into saving the CO2. Exactly. But again, I invite you, please, uh, let's deep dive together into this topic. And of course, you can already find more information about it on our uh, website. Let's see if there are some more uh, questions. Yeah. I will also add that we have a lot of docs uh, that explain how Cabit works, but also how can you use it with uh, so many agents that uh, have this compatibility with S3. Yeah, you can find the, the link to the docs uh, uh, in, in the comment. Uh, you can start from, from there if you want to, I don't know, uh, use Veeam, uh, uh, CyberDuck, uh, um, and all these clients to, to move your files, pick up your files into Cabit. Exactly. Well, in the meanwhile, we wait. Uh, we're just uh, going to show you the next appointment, which I think in this case will be in Italian, but again, as we said before, uh, many more English demos and webinar will come in the following weeks. Uh, next week for our Italian uh, um, clients, we're gonna have a live demo for MSP and resellers on how to set up a Cabit account in just a few clicks. So yeah, that being said, I think, I don't know Tommaso if you have uh, anything else to, to say, maybe we can uh, again remind you that if you have any uh, feedback or suggestions for you know how improving uh, this content when we prepare so passionately every week, please share with us. We are just uh, more than happy to, to improve day by day, even thank you to you, of course. And uh, yeah, Tommaso, any last words? No, last word, uh, if you want any clarification and stuff, just uh, email us. <laughs> we are here. Yeah. Good. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And um, yeah. we'll see you next time in the next demo. See you. Have a good day to everybody.